pursue, they're on the freeway, they're coming east. Crime situation is high, it's, it's very, very busy for law enforcement. But again, it's a very small percentage of people that are causing the problems. Just crashed. All right. I'm going to get us a little bit off because we have like 17 guns pointed in this direction. night patrol with the LA sheriffs in the city of Compton. Two suspected members of the Southside Compton Crips gang are under arrest. It would be really unsafe for them to be in the rivals area and if they are there they're gonna have to have protection because it's almost expected for them to be armed. Police estimate there are almost 4,000 gang members in Compton. Our area, our service area, is 10 square miles. Fireworks. 10 square miles. So for every square mile that we have, we have six active gangs. 37 gangs compete for control in a city of just 100,000 people. It's always gang on gang gang on gang the violence is there the major major problem is when we have an innocent person who gets caught in the crossfire or and it happens way too often um that case of mistaken identity Compton gained its grim reputation for gang violence during the 80s and 90s at the height of America's crack epidemic. This is a madman gun, yeah. a double bear. Yeah, got you in two. Yeah, but, 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 a man's man but, 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 gun. Oh, a man that go kill with this is really mad. Wipe it off the vehicle. Out of that mix emerged West Coast gangster rap, and one of the most influential groups of all time. NWA. Thirty years on, the trauma of that era lives on. Yeah, yeah, I grew up right here. This is my childhood home. Born and raised right here in this house. You know, I had a history of, of taking things that wasn't mine. <laughs> if I saw it and liked it, I would take it. So I will protect him by any means necessary. I will protect you him know, the same so. way. You know Even I mean? if it means hurting someone else. I mean, pretty much. Yeah, pretty, much. pretty much. I mean, ultimately, if I had to hurt someone to keep him from getting hurt, then ultimately that would be my choice. Compton's notorious street gangs, the Crips, the Bloods, and the Pyrus, were formed in the late 1960s. Their clothes, their tattoos, even their jewelry all marked which gang they belonged to. Wearing the wrong colored shirt would have, and still could, get you killed. a lot of different type of shootings going that would happen on this street. Will joined the Crips when he was just nine years old. I went through this alley. I was going to the store to get some Kool-Aid. And I saw the guy pass me. And he looked at me. And uh, next thing I hear is a whole bunch of gunfire. So of right course, here? Yeah, right here where we're standing. Today, 
Compton is on the up. Shots out to y'all. A quarter of the population lives below the poverty line. But jobs are coming back, and there's a sense that things are starting to turn around. Yeah. Will works as a community activist, trying to stop youngsters from ending up in gangs. I see you. You know I'm gonna come over and give you a hug. What's up? Hey. What's up with that watching something like this? All day. I love you. I love you too, girl. Keep up the good work. Oh this yeah, is really I'm gonna definitely nice. do that. I'm gonna definitely do that. I'm a mother who lost son. And when my kids got killed and other mothers' kids got killed, they came there and helped us. She, I didn't have no money to marry She money. lost two sons within 60 days. You yes. know, and uh, that's where her motivation motivation comes yes. to get out here. She also out here in the trenches with us. Hey, no Thank you. Thank you. Compton's youthful mayor, Asia Brown, has made it her mission to transform the image and the economy of the city. In 2013, early into her first term, and after 16 killings in just four months, Asia Brown decided to hold a crisis meeting. She put a call out to the Bloods and the Crips to try to bring about a truce. It was rocky at first, you know, we, we had a few people threatening to leave, and I said, you know, the, the ground rules are we have to stay until we're finished. What gave you the confidence to do that? This is my community. I'm not afraid of my own people. And so um, it, it was just really interesting to hear from them. But they are, are very uh, pragmatic. They talked about the, the need for employment opportunities that they can access. They talked about um, the barriers to their employment because of their criminal records. But I told them um, it's, it's not about just what can I do for you. I, I told them that I'm willing to work with you if you all can make a commitment as well. Compton has switched from a majority black to a majority Hispanic town. But half the gangs are still African American. And it was to these gangs that Asia Brown turned first. Once about a time, like he said, we wouldn't be sitting at a table together. But she did it, it was over. How many of us? 50, 60, and 300 in a room together. So you guys, you were all there at the first yeah. meeting when everyone got together? Yeah, we were there. To be in there with 300 guys, that's... Disrespectful. Terrible. Terrible. Terrible to sit down and listen. A lot of men wouldn't do it. And I'm quite sure she got the flag, why is she doing it? And she came in the room, and it was in disarray when she came. And it got in order, and we got the business. Did they listen to her, Cynthia? Yeah, they listened to her. They listened to her, yeah. They she, listened to her because this, this is a first. I mean, this is a mayor where if it's the middle of the night and you need to call her and she say, what's, what's wrong, what's going on? She's there, you know, she's on hand. So you don't get that, not even from other cities, from people that I've spoke with, you know. So you don't get that from a, a lot of mayors. And then Young, and like he said, in a room with a bunch of men, I, I'm gang banging. I'm in there looking at them sometimes like, they crazy. Some of them on drugs. Don and Fred are from rival gangs. Don's a blood. Fred's a crip. Fred, if you'd come across Don in the street 10, 15 years ago... Oh, it would have been a problem. Like, what do you mean a problem? You know what I'm saying? It would have been a fight, a stabbing, or a shooting. One of the three. Because you were on rival gangs. Because, like I said, you know what I'm saying? I was young and dumb. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have an understanding of life or nothing else. All I've cared about is my gang. I'm going to represent my gang to the fullest and didn't nothing matter with my gang. So you would have hurt him? He would have tried. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he yeah. he would have tried. Yeah. You know? Is it still the same today? It is, no, it's not like it used to be. It's, it's not. It, no, it's, it's watered down. It's not like it used to be, but it's still crucial. The majority of these guys, they don't like the way that they're living. You know, they don't like having to watch their back, having to worry about getting shot, can't go here, can't go there. You know, they don't like they don't like that lifestyle. They in it because they caught up in their comfort zone and you know they don't know how to go outside of the box. 
SEC tweeting when Boy acknowledges responding code three. I remember when I was working custody, some of the gangsters there, just because I would see them every day, I had a rapport with them. A lot of them were so, so afraid of the one thing that you and I love. And their fear is being out here. One of them who was um, a very, very uh, important person when it came to the structure, he told me, I have a son, I don't know how to be a father, and he goes further and he tells me, I wouldn't know how to survive out there. I don't know how to have a job. I don't know how to be a regular person. All I know is violence, and I promise you, if I get out of here, I'm going to hurt someone else, and I don't want to do that anymore. I'm tired of it. Regardless of whom is in the White House, there is not going to be a helicopter that comes and descends into Compton to fix all of our issues. That's just not happening. The height of the crack epidemic saw an explosion in violence as rival gangs fought for control of the drugs market. 87 people were murdered in 1991 alone. In 2017, that figure was 19. Will served 12 years in prison for a string of offenses, including carjacking and gun possession. In December of 1999, he decided to try to turn his life around. I was significantly depressed, emotionally distraught. You know, I was suffering from a lot of the traumatic experiences I've suffered, you know. You were thinking of killing yourself? I definitely. I was thinking about killing myself. I mean, that, um, that was the solution to the pollution. Um, I decided uh, I needed to go see my mom. It was two days after Christmas. You know, I decided I needed to go see her at least one more time. Um, uh, before I came back and did what I felt I needed to do. You know, I sat right on the street around the corner um, with an AK-47 ready to just end it all. He didn't. He went to see a preacher. He was basically saying, you're not the first one who felt this way. Um, and you're not the first one who are going through what you're going through. Um, but the difference you can make is to hear what I have to say and make a change. You'll find a lot of the kids, they're looking for something mm -hmm. uh, when they join gangs. There's something missing. And the gangs have learned to cater to those things that are missing. The steady fall in crime since the 90s is partly due to smarter policing. More significantly, as drug markets stabilized, there were fewer turf wars between the gangs. But there are worrying signs. Hi, Captain Thatcher. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good. Yes, good, good, have good. a seat. About 30 percent less gang shootings this year, we believe, than we've had last year. So oh, wow. the gang activity is really reduced in the sense That's of violence. That's significant. Right. And a lot of your older gang members now are people that had gang membership in the past mm -hmm. are having a hard time directing the activities of the uh, the younger gang members. And it's not like it used to be that right. way. Right. They, they consider the younger gang members lawless. So we had an understanding with the gang members as mm -hmm. to what wasn't wasn't in within boundaries as to how we treated each other. Mm -hmm. And we've lost kind of control of that. Appreciate your hard work, sir. Your crime rates are below the rest of the county for the most part. So. Well, isn't that a great success? <laughs> Thank you. Our Avalon Boulevard and Road Trend two vehicles, HP, fire We're getting an emergency okay, call. It's a, uh, a vehicle collision with injuries. Who is 
driving? I'm driving. You were driving, you okay, right? Just a little shaking up, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Do you have your driver's license? Yeah. As far as the the violent crimes, it goes up and down. I mean, there are times where gangs, they'll have a truce and they'll kind of settle down. And then out of nowhere, like if someone turns on a light switch, they're at it again. The reason why the homicide rate has dropped, it, it's not because the violence has gone away. You know, someone didn't just sprinkle fairy dust on the city and it's gone. It's there. The reason why the homicide rate has dropped significantly is because of the advancements in uh, medical science. Doctors, right now, more than ever, more than five years ago, they're saving more and more lives. trouble that's why this is handy I've been coming to this store since I was going to that elementary over there and so you know all this has changed you know we had a lot of homeboys get killed up here just hanging out you know because this was almost a shared store between two rival gangs and so um, in the process of that a lot of people lost their lives up here you know, a lot of shooting, a lot of drive-bys would happen here. Hello! Hello! Will now spends most of his nights out on the streets trying to stop conflicts from happening or getting out of control. Hello! Hello! Was, you know, hello. we just out we got a hitting corner to corner and communicating with those that are always out. You know, Hello, no. as a free you know, a lot of times we need that ourselves so we can understand what's going on in the communities, you know, because they out here, sometimes they see stuff we don't see, you know, it helps us determine who we need to go talk to. Oh, yeah. All right, you know. Bye. Can you see it? In order to survive, many families had to leave the city altogether. And of course, this is my mom, my beautiful mother, Deborah. When Will's mum saw things getting out of control, she uprooted her family and fled to nearby San Bernardino. My uncle Lester, he was killed in 1987. In Compton. Compton. Shot in his face. So we've been victims of the violence too, you know. I think this was our family first experience of the violence in Compton. I'm willing to bet you it's not a family in Compton that didn't lose somebody or someone near and dear to them to gang violence in some shape, form, or fashion. We lived through a war. It was a war. It was like a war zone. I seen a lot and it's weird because I always like tell my friends like I'm a nurse now but I kind of think I seen more death as a child than I have as an adult. There was plenty of days you know I'd be playing outside and we knew oh that car don't look familiar. We probably got about two seconds to get in the backyard and sure enough by the time we get in the backyard and lay down pack, 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 pack. come out and here come my mama driving down the street get in the car gotta go in the house we like hey all right but it became a way of life it just became it was it was not normal, but then it was normal. You know what I mean? I know as, as a young kid, I didn't show that as much, but I always loved my mom, and it hurts to know that she went through that. You know, she had to suffer that, and that we put more on her table than she should have had on her table. And so, you know, and, I, and that's something I have to live with because it, the, the thought occurs every now and then, and it makes me cry, you know? It hurts me. Even that I've, even though I've been living like this for 20 years, good, doing good work, great work, it still hurts me to know that 20 some years ago I took my mom through what she had to go through and suffer, you know? And so it's something that I'll have to live with for the rest of my life because I can't change that, you know? But um, it hurts, it hurts, you know? The whole neighborhood is, 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 is totally different and it's, and it's sad when you see because you know, oh, we used to live over there, but he dead or 
next door or they all died and you know it's just sad are they in jail for the rest of their life the ones that ain't dead they're in jail for the rest of their life and it's only a handful that made it out and it's sad it's sad it's really sad Down this quiet street in Compton is Asia Brown's former family home. My grandmother was a registered nurse, and so she worked overnight. And um, her schedule was a little bit different, and um, there was a home intrusion, and then someone raped and murdered her. No one else was home when this happened? No, just my grandmother. She was all alone? Yes. I don't ever remember not knowing um, what happened to my grandmother because I remember my, my mother had the holiday time being really sad and I would ask my mother, mommy, why are you so sad? And she was like, I just miss my mother. No one was ever brought to justice and the case remains open. The loss of a life is not a, a moment in time, it's the loss is for a lifetime. And there are holes that are created that can never be filled. And so it gives me um, a level of compassion, respect, um, and even insight and a perspective into what um, most people are dealing with um, in my community. Asia, when you look at this house in this street, what does it make you feel? It's bittersweet for me. Um, it's, it's nice to be able to, to know where my family spent the mo a lot of their time growing up, but at the same time, it's such a place for despair for my family. So it's like a solemn place, I would say. The mayor's story isn't uncommon. There's a level of post-traumatic stress in this town that comes from decades of extreme violence. But maybe it's that shared experience that could also drive people to end the violence.